Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're having a fabulous day. We are talking about something very, very cool today. Every month, uh, people over on Patreon who support this project make some suggestions of things that they would like to see, and that is this video. Brad and Dennis would like me to uh, share this thing with you. This is a mineral hardness pick set, which I've shown here uh, before on the channel. Looks like this. We're going to be talking about it in depth. I've only ever really shared this on an identification video where we went through all of the different testing that you can do on a rocker mineral to help you identify it. I will throw a link in here to that video. But on this one, we are only talking about these guys today, these hardness pick set. So the basics of it would be, this is meant to be a more accurate way of determining, determining the Mohs hardness of a rock or mineral, uh, as opposed to using one rock to scratch another rock. The basics of it would be, we have a one to 10, and down at, you know, one is like talc, up at 10 is a diamond, and everything kind of falls in between. We as rock hounds generally are picking up rocks in the five, six, and seven range. I mean, there's always exceptions like calcite. And we're going to be a, uh, showing you how these uh, picks really work, why they're good, and why they're better than the kind of like DIY home thing that maybe you've seen, you've probably seen this chart before. Uh, wildly inaccurate, and we'll get into that here shortly. Let's head over to the bench and let's uh, look at some hardness picks. I really like using hardness when doing identification work because if you have the location, the exact location something came from and a hardness, you can really hone in on what that rock might be. With these picks, we get to go th one through nine and then there's also some scratch plates in here so in this case, a piece of glass being a 5.5. There are a couple of streak, there's you know, a little streak plate in here. We're not doing streak. We have a piece of brass, which we can scratch and get a three and a half. Piece of aluminum for a two and a half, two and a half, right there. So it comes with those as well as a little magnet and a little uh, like emery Stone was it like a hundred grit piece for uh, sharpening the picks. Well, one, uh, <laughs> making a mess. One thing that it's important to point out here is this is just one step among many that you're going to want to do to really identify something. Like I said before, you know, specific gravity. There's all these other things for the fracture. We're only looking at hardness today. Before we jump into these picks and how to use them, let's talk about that image I showed you earlier that says that you can use common household items to determine hardness of things. Now, this is a problem, and I will uh, we'll get into it right here shortly, but I do have the penny, the steel nail, the diamond bit, the masonry bit, masonry bit, and a knife. The instructions that come with these are pretty good. They tell you exactly how to do this process. Uh, but, you know, one being talc, ten being a diamond, everything kind of falls in place here. I'm sure you can, uh, well, some of you out there can just identify what we have here, and we'll look at them closely, and then we'll go and do some testing and then we will verify uh, our results. Thoughts? We'll call this number one. What do you think number one is? You put down in the comments. One, two, here's three, this will be four, and five. I'm sure a lot of you out there got these. It's okay if you don't. We will be doing some scratch tests now. So generally um, I will usually start with like the five. I start with the five because we have 
a little plastic tip here. We got plastic. Three is copper. And then we're going to get into our uh, heat treated tips here. Let's look at these real quick under the microscope. So one thing that you'll notice right away is that this is a sharp, sharp point, which is important. We want to maintain these things being sharp. And you can kind of see the, the, the texture here. And well, you could really sharpen that a long ways, couldn't you? That was uh, the eight there. And then even going down into the copper, the copper is quite, quite sharp, sharp enough. Plastic likes to get dull uh, quite quickly. Uh, I would not recommend starting with uh, your two here. Um, you're gonna, it's gonna be mushed up before you know it. We got a little mushed bit there at the end uh, already. Well, the, the sharpness is very important and this is why that little chart does not work very well. Obviously, uh, if you're trying to scratch something with your fingernail, that's not very sharp. The edge of a copper penny is not very sharp. The steel nail is very blunt, unless you sharpen it. Now you could sharpen this, right? Like you could uh, take that to like a file and sharpen that. And I will do that here right now. There it is looking a lot better. However, even still, there is a lot of inaccuracy in a nail that you don't get with a uh, tested and treated pick set. The problem with the common items is it's not tested against anything. Now I have found from my own testing that diamond bits are pretty consistent, these masonry bits, but nails and the tips of knives have a lot of variation in it and should not be uh, really trusted. So you can see like the tip of that knife is quite sharp but uh, do you really want to be carving at rocks with your uh, nice knife? Probably not, probably not. I'm gonna start with number one here. And I think we will start uh, with a four. I think four will probably be a good place to start here. And you're going to hold it kind of like a, you're writing with a pen, like a 70-ish degree angle. And with moderate pressure, you are going to scrape and uh, move up until you get something that you think might be a scrape. There's a five. And uh, well, six definitely put a scrape in that. You can see that little line right there. Now we're gonna take this over to the microscope here and uh, look at that under there. I'm going to wipe this real quick, make sure there's no dust kind of in the way. Now, out in the field, you could do this with uh, like a jeweler's loop. But you want to inspect this and make sure that what you're actually seeing there is an actual scrape. And you can't even see the other scratches. So, the five did not scratch it, the six did. What that tells us, that could be like a 5.2, uh, you know, a 5.5, a 6. Well, we do have our 5.5 little scratch plate. I don't really use this very often, but we're going to use it here today. And we will try to scratch. And we'll put that under the... Microscope here. Do we have a scratch there? We do. You can kind of see right there I'm moving it. <laughs> uh, I would say that is a scratch in the glass and not just a uh, residual of the material because I just wiped it off. Okay, so we are 5.5 to a we're between a 5 and a 5.5 because we scratched the glass. So that helped us hone that in some, that little little glass plate. So uh, what do you think it is now? I'll tell you at the end. 
this guy right here. Same thing. This is a lot harder. Now this is more a, a natural cleavage face on this, which is tough because when we put it under the microscope, we do not get to see, well, we don't have that nice, beautiful, flat surface. And when it comes to doing this in the field, if you choose to do it in the field, you're going to run into this problem as well. But uh, let's pick a spot here. Oh, let's start with a five. And we're going to go up to a six. And then we'll go seven. And we'll go eight. And then we'll look at this under the microscope. If I can even find it on here. So what you're looking at right here is four scrapes on the microscope. So we have the four, five, six, and s wait, we have the five, six, seven, and eight. So on the left, that's, I'll throw some numbers on there. And you can see what could look like a scratch is actually the tip being worn off onto the, the actual rock until we get over to eight, which you can see a very distinctive scratch in the material. And it went from the gray to the white because we're not rubbing the metal off. So number two. Now we're going to be testing the inside of this. And this guy right here. And we'll start with a five. And the smooth cut face is significantly nicer to work with. Five and six and seven. Okay, now I think I can even show you this right here. Can you see, let's see? So that's the area. You can see we have a distinctive scratch, but you can kind of see, well, which one's the scratch? Where did the scratching start? This is why uh, the magnification is king. Magnification is king. Looking at that piece under the microscope, I did not wipe that. We're just going under there. And you can see one has a scratch on it, and that would be the one on the far right. So if I wipe this with my finger real quick, we can maybe get rid of some of these, and we can really kind of see then that the one on the right, the eight, definitely scratched it. The seven did not. So we are between a seven and an eight. That could be like a 7.1. That could be like a, you know, a seven even uh and 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 we're just a little under on the actual hardness of the pick but this gets us pretty close pretty close it's not something to be taken uh religiously i'll do the other ones here and to show you the results again five six seven and eight and eight scratched it the other ones did not so we are between a seven and an eight on here or it could be a seven point one this one right here, which was rock number five, uh, a two did not scratch it, which that's the plastic, and the three, which is copper, did scratch it. So what do you think number five is here? Number five? Number one is a piece of green common opal. Number two was a piece of quartz. Piece of quartz. We tested the chalcedony on the inside of a Lucky Strike Thunder Egg. 
This uh, little thing right here is a piece of Jasper from Biggs. Wait, the China Hollow Picture Jasper Mine in Oregon. And finally, the one that was scratched by the copper is a piece of calcite. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there got that. Well, that is how we use these. Now, once you have your location, your hardness, preferably with something like this and not with the DIY ones, which, you know, I, it pay, I wish there was a, be, a better way, but this is kind of a pricey thing, right? And I don't like that. I don't like that this is like a hundred bucks, 120 bucks. I wish it was like 30 bucks, but it's not. But there's also nothing to replicate it. The actual, I've done a bunch of testing. Uh, it could almost be another video with different nails and different things and trying, I've ha I have nails that I've sharpened, steel nails that range between a four and a six on the hardness scale of testing against these picks. So how are you even able to use those? Like you just, if you, maybe if you had a pick set and you could somehow find accurate nails and things that would match up with this right here maybe that would work but otherwise the picks are king you can take this information and you can i like to use the mindat's advanced mineral search tool i'll put a link down below in the description box go check it out well brad dennis i hope this answered your question some about how to use these I appreciate you. Uh, if you're at all curious and you want to support this project, you can do so by heading on over to Patreon. Check that out. For everybody else, I appreciate you being here, being a subscriber, and making it to the very end of the video. Go check out the website, currentlyrockhunting.com, and I will catch you in the next video.